My name is Jens Christian Hermansen. I am the editor of Cosmos, a quarterly magazine about spiritual science. I believe in the value of open-minded and critical thinking. I'm in London to meet Dr. Rupert Sheldrick. We are going to talk about science, God and visions for the future. Sheldrick is a renowned British biologist. He's the author of more than 80 scientific papers and 10 books. He has previously been ranked among the top 100 global thought leaders. But he's also a controversial figure. He is part of a group of scientists and philosophers who are currently exploring the intersection between science and spirituality. Science has, has, has given us many things. Without science, no, no technology, no hospitals, no industrial revolution. What do you see as, as the main problem with science today, with, with modern science? Well, science has indeed given us many things, and it's a wonderful method of investigation in principle. That's why I'm still a scientist. That's why today itself, when I leave here, I'm going back to one of my experiments. Um, I spend a lot of my time doing research. Um, what's wrong with it is not the method of critical inquiry and experimentation and hypothesis testing, but rather the ideology that's taken over science. Um, since the late 19th century, the sciences have been dominated by a materialist ideology. And materialism is not science, it's a philosophy of nature. Uh, it's a series of assumptions about the nature of nature. The principal assumption, of course, is that matter is the ultimate and only reality, or physical, uh, the physical universe is the only reality there is, and that this reality is unconscious. So it portrays a universe of unconscious matter obeying mechanical laws uh, with no purpose, no direction, no mind, no consciousness, um, except mysteriously consciousness emerges in human brains and maybe animal brains as well. That's the so-called hard problem for materialists because everything ought to be unconscious according to their philosophy. So it's a terrible embarrassment that we're conscious. So some of them try to pretend we're not uh, and others try to say well consciousness is nothing but an illusion. But of course that doesn't solve the problem because illusion is itself a mode of consciousness. So. That's a, a philosophy which gives a very distorted view of, of reality, a very partial view. It's great for making machines, which modern civilization depends on, the tremendous technological triumphs. But it's very bad for understanding consciousness or the nature of life, or indeed the purpose of evolution of the universe, since it rules out the idea of any purpose. So if you, if you could change something about the way that science is being conducted today, What would that be? Well, I, that's the theme of my uh, book, The Science Delusion, called Science Set Free in America, uh, which is to question these the ten fundamental dogmas of science and to free science from uh, the straitjacket of these dogmas so that scientific research can go on in areas that at present are prohibited or at least marginalized. Um, So uh, I think that would unleash a whole new wave of scientific creativity. How do you see science 10, 15, 20 years from now? What is your hope? My hope is that science in 10 to 15, 20 years will be much more open, holistic, um, less dogmatically reductionist. Well, I hope that dogmatic reductionism will come to an end um, and that it will become less hegemonic, less a, a kind of form of Western imperialism. Um, right now, anyone who becomes a scientist in Japan or China or India or Africa or South America learns standard Western-type science. And their indigenous culture and their indigenous traditions are simply ignored. Um, I think there's a great deal to learn in India, for example, from the traditions of yoga and of Ayurvedic medicine in China from Chinese traditional medicine and from Taoist approaches to nature 
And similarly in Japan and in Africa and South America, there are traditions there which are simply of no account. They're just ignored because they're not relevant to Western-style science. So I hope there'll be kind of Japanese science and Chinese science and Indian science and Brazilian science, which builds on what's happening in those societies and in their ecosystems and isn't just simply a transplant of dogmas from London and New York. Thank you for watching. Please join us for our next episode about consciousness and God.